Yes, again, Ed, he works hard for the honey. Um, we're going to do our weekly inspections, but I wanted to take some time to answer some of your questions this week. Uh, we've had a number of them. Um, and Chris B., our friend on Facebook, asked us about uh, oversight a little bit. Um, some of you saw that I got a, a registered card uh, from the state of Maine, and that comes from uh, the Maine State Department of Agriculture. Uh, Division of Animal and Plant Safety. Um, I believe that goes through all states that anytime you keep a hive, a personal hive, you have to register with the Department of Agriculture in your state. We also have local ordinances here in Portland. Uh, Portland is an extremely bee friendly city. Uh, if you're thinking about starting your own hives, um, please find a master beekeeper in your area. Uh, reach out to the Department of Agriculture uh, and find out what the ordinances are in your area. Uh, I also got a question. Uh, someone was looking a few videos back and w was sort of laughing that I said the bees were headbutting me. I keep pointing out the bees are not aggressive, uh, as you can see. Um, although they're being a little aggressive with somebody right there. We've been seeing a lot of robbing behavior. Um, when a bee stings you, it dies. So it's in a bee's best interest uh, not to sting you. They'll buzz you a few times. They'll let you know that they see you. Uh, the best thing you can do is take a couple of steps away. Don't swing at them. Maybe take two steps to the right or left uh, into shade. If there's shade nearby, they, they will tend to not follow you. Um, but if they are gonna sting you, or, or they're fixing to, uh, they'll do something called headbutting. They'll they'll fly into you pretty hard three or four times. That lets you know they're uh, they've had enough. And uh, and finally, somebody asked me. You can see there's there's a lot less activity than there has been the last couple of weeks. Hey there. Um, we just got through what's called uh, a nectar flow. So maybe two weeks ago in my video, I was talking about the fact that there was lilac blooming up here. The yard was covered in clover. Um, here in Maine, our, our local you know, uh, ecosystem was, was really just flourishing in a way that uh, was very beneficial to the bees. That slowed down a little bit. Um, they're coming back with less pollen, uh, they're coming back with less nectar, um, which you can see sort of accounts for the decreased activity, uh, but also is going to alert me that I need to be, I need to be careful while I'm opening up the hives. I've talked a little bit about robbing behavior. Um, a bee in its lifetime during the summer will create a twelfth of a tablespoon, I'm sorry, a twelfth of a teaspoon of honey. And uh, the only thing easier than going out, getting nectar, bringing it back, partially digesting it and turning it into honey is flying into someone else's hive and taking theirs. Uh, and bees, bees are not above that. So while I'm going through here, I'm going to want to just make sure my other hive, natural bees in the area, uh, aren't picking up on the resources in the hive here and, and trying to ransack them. Um, the last thing before I jump in there, I really appreciate your questions, guys. It's been humbling how much I don't know about the hives of bees I have, and uh, finding answers to your questions has really uh, helped me to become a better beekeeper already. I invite any more questions on the site. If you want to message me, uh, if you know me, shoot me a text. Uh, I'll do my best to find you a good answer. And without further ado, so this one last week we uh, we threw the extra. Brood super on here. 
uh, which is why this got much taller, uh, to help them sort of fill that out. They need resources, they need carbohydrates. I've left the feeder on there. Uh, to make sure they're not running out of resources. Some of you guys have seen in the past, we've had just mass B side. Um, boy, and they have gone through that pretty handily. So it's time to get a little more syrup. That's not something you want to do. I'm going to sit here for a moment. I'm going to let them settle down a little bit. I'm sure they're not real happy with me right now. But as I said before, I don't want to leave that open too long. No sting. Uh, it was just, uh, yeah. I've been told that after a year or two, I'll lose that little startle response when they're on my fingers. Happens to the best of us. Now, last week, these guys were really chomping at the bit. Uh, creating queen cells and I've been sort of broadly using the term supersedure cell which uh, I've come to learn in a little bit of research is, is not really accurate um, all supersedure cells are queen cells but not all queen cells are supersedure cells and I'll explain that a little more in my blog this week uh, if that's something that interests you And I am surprised. It looks like they haven't really filled out. Much up top here. I'm going to be interested to see. I'm going to be interested to see um, if there's been any sort of diminishing in their resources. Uh, as we have, as I, I keep pointing out, as we have had some robbing behavior. And if a strong hive um, decides to ransack a weaker hive that can really just destroy their environment here, this, this bottom frame actually looks really full. Uh, which is good, which is good. They're starting to um, pin down these frames to each other with a substance we call propolis. Uh, it's a, a natural adhesive that bees make. Careful not to crush anybody. Wow, we have a pretty full honey frame here. Um, wow, and these are deep. Ah, uh, this is the one where we've got some funky shapes and, and potentially um, potentially the, the frame here is a little off center. Um, so the bees are sort of compensating on this side. You can see those are some deep, deep honey cells there. 
I'm gonna wanna be careful not to drop this. They've capped a, a great deal of it. That's what we're hoping to see in the other hive. Uh, up in the, the honey boxes. But not a lot of extra um, additional building from what we saw last week. There's wax down the bottom here. Um, and that, that's actually impressively deep honey cells. There are entire bees in some of those cells. Um, and it looks almost like they can walk. Yeah, they've dug through the comb so that they can walk through it. Interesting. know that we've had a really difficult time um, putting eyes on my queen in the other hive. Um, this hive is a great deal easier uh, because my queen is marked. She's got a little yellow mark on her. Uh, so we've got some more Honey and pollen, I see some brood in here. Um, some capped brood, I even see some eggs. So these guys are continuing to flourish. Uh, and we're gonna see of a continued increase in their population. Uh, I really wish I could get in close enough um, for you guys to see some of these eggs, but um, my assistant isn't here, so I think our production value is gonna be down a little bit this week. Here you can see. Some of the brood over here. Some capped brood and some of that slick nectar up top there. You know, looking in and seeing how full these frames are, I am a uh, surprised that they haven't expanded up into the new super. And I'll have to get some feedback and see why that is really. Because it's so full, they're uh, awfully busy moving in there. It's making it a little more difficult to, uh, to pull these frames. But, uh, you know, we got to do things on their time. All right, so. that there aren't eggs in there. And I don't see. I don't see an egg in either, which is good news. We're gonna pull those out um, so that we don't end up with a swarm. But I'm uh, talking about these guys right here and here, it's sort of open cells 
Um, because queens need more nutrition than a regular bee, they make a larger cell for them. Uh, which, just like last week, we're going to go in there, we're going to break that down a little bit so that we don't end up with uh, extra queens. And quick look on this side. Looks good. We've got a frame of brood here. As you can see, and I've mentioned before, the, the wax is becoming a little darker as they continue to use it. No queen on this side, I do see. And I think our, our wax has sort of melted and misshapen a little bit. And there's been some warping. So I'm going to try to push that guy back into its place. And see if we can't right that ship there. And before I put this one back, I am going to get rid of those queen cells. It uh, looks like there's no, nothing in them. So, I don't think they're going to get too mad at me. In fact, uh, as, as I did last week, I'm just going to reach in there and pull these guys out. They can remake them. sort of all stages of eggs, um, larva, the, the sort of worm-like um, larva in the bottom of the cells, and we want to see capped brood. Hey there. I think she's attempting to pollinate me. Uh, we're getting into these two middle frames. This is where we want to see most of our brood. Um, I think I mentioned last week that sometimes they just line up along the edge. <laughs> and I'm getting that over here like, I wish you would. I wish you would. Wait your turn. I'm coming. So certainly not that I'm, I'm looking forward to having the experience, but one of the things I do want to show you guys is, is some of the maladies that can occur with a hive. And as many of you know, um, bee populations are in decline. And part of that is potentially uh, because of something we call Varroa mites, uh, which I'm, I'm eyeballing everyone for right now. I've actually not witnessed uh, any of my bees with Varroa, uh, although there is almost no chance that none of them have it. Um, so 
so Varroa, if I if I understand correctly, was uh, originally uh, an issue which has sort of come to us um, from Asia and Asian bee stalks, uh, and they are like ticks for bees. They get into the larva. off the blood of the larva and then when that bee hatches or comes eats its way out of the wax uh, they then are able to move around the hive are able to connect to other bees and they get right on their backs where they are completely unable to get rid of them themselves I am um, I am shocked that having gone through my hive so many times I, I've not witnessed a single case of it, uh, which frankly is wonderful, uh, but we are still going to test for it uh, in the very near future. Got a healthy set of brood here. And again, I see larva, I see capped. See some younger larvae and eggs around the edge. So we are good. We are good. We're towards the middle, so I'm I'm anticipating that we're gonna be seeing my queen in the very near future. Oh, we we have a couple of bees being born towards the top there. Um, let me, and I better not drop this like I did with the other one, but there are actually two breaking through right here, which is uh, a great sign. Our population continues to, uh, to rise and be healthy. I always just think that's the coolest thing, and I'm, I hope I'm getting it in the frame here, but um, this is what happens. In 20, around 23 days, um, the, the fully pupated bee chews its way out and joins the hive. A couple of cells of pollen up here, which is also good to see. Well, there's several, uh, which, like I said, after, uh, at the end of, uh, at the end of a, a honey flow, um, is good to see that they've got enough resources there. getting a little defensive and I'm wondering if uh, we shouldn't speed this up uh, so as not to invite robbers and they're starting to examine me a little more closely as I'm coming in for the frame You're seeing there's a little more activity here, uh, and it could just be that it's it's that time of the season. 
Um, so they are checking me out. Uh, I would like to put eyes on my queen. Which I haven't done yet. Oh, it's a great frame of, of larva here. Uh, which means that we will probably be finding the queen pretty soon. There's once again a, it's a queen cell down the bottom there. I have a feeling I'm going to be cutting a great deal of those out of this hive as they tend to right there down the bottom. You can see that little cup. And we continue to have a great deal of larva. No queen on the frame here. Posted some videos about swarms. Um, if you want to check those out, uh, I believe it was actually last week. Uh, my friend Chris B had asked uh, what felt like a very well-timed question about swarming behavior. Now let's see if we can't find that queen on this next frame and start wrapping this up. The girls are getting edgy. Hail the Queen. And I'm gonna hold this in a way that I shouldn't, but you can see my queen right there. And maybe in production we can enlarge that a little bit, but maybe not. You can see she's got the, the yellow mark on her back, the elongated abdomen, and a darker color than the rest. And just as I would expect where the queen is, it's a great deal of larva capped brood. Want to take a quick peek for any more queen cells? Because we like this queen, we'd like her to stay here. That was funny. And like I said, this is a, uh, and a, a great deal of eggs and capped brood on this side. This is a good thing. So we're going to very, very carefully put our queen away. And I, uh, I apologize again for the production value, but I'm gonna just pick these frames up. I'm going to check them very quickly for queen cells and then I am going to wrap this up because you can see there's some, uh, some additional activity here. We want to make sure that our 
thieves are not being robbed. And that could account for some of this additional um, defensive behavior. And I always like to point out thieves are not aggressive, but they are defensive. And if they feel like they need to protect the hive, that is what they'll do. So there's no queen cells, but they are filling out. And I think I see actually a great deal of honey on the next frame. They've done a good job of sort of filling out this way. As you can see, um, some really deep capped honey over here. Brood, I see eggs, I see larvae, I see bees chewing through. So our population in this hive is growing as we speak and as, as one might hope. Um, given that we've just uh, expanded their hive, I'm going to close this up and bring their space Back to what one might hope. I'll be with uh, all the frames together in the center, and we're gonna, we're gonna lock this back down. Just as before, we're going to sort of carefully go along the sides and try not to crush anyone, uh, which sort of feels like with all these bees inevitable sometimes, but it's a little warning for everyone to get out of the way. towards the edge here and it's, it's where it starts to get tough. In or out, in or out. In or out. I think we did it. Gonna get the space back up here. Correct. <laughs> Throw the roof back on. With our feeder. will try to get in there. Uh, there's a thing called wax moths, which will try to get in there and eat the wax that the bees have created. I'm going to want to, because of the robbing behavior, we're continuing to just tap up that top circulation area. And it's time to 
slows down. All right. Take one moment to try to just balance the little issue. As you noticed here, there we go. All right. Why don't you guys grab yourself a snack? And uh, I'm going to close up here and I'll meet you over by Hive 2 in a moment.